Uhuru brothers and sisters, you know, I am so honored, excited to be here today. And this is where I'm supposed to be. And I bring you greetings from Operation Power, our organization, our co-chairs, Brenda and Karan. Right now, as we speak, they have a forum on the Black Panther women, the women of the Black Panther Party. And my queen, Inez Barron, I'm also known as Mr. Inez Barron. That's, that's my other identity. Uh, she's moderating that to bring to forth the women of the Black Panther movement. You know, many of them have not gotten the accolades that they need. The other reason why I'm here, because Inez is out of the electoral arena now, and she's Grammy, and I'm Papa. So we have four grandchildren, Osai Mwese, Solomon, and Khadijah from my son Jelani and his wife Kristen. And then we have Jariah from my son Jawanza and his woman Fiona. Now, Jawanza told me to tell you, Omadi Yeshatela, that he was so honored to be here. Years ago, I brought him here. And he said to make sure you tell the chairman that I'll never forget that visit to the Uhura house. So give it up for my, my grandchildren. You know, the other reason why I'm here is because, I mean, I have all good reasons not to be here. You know, we're in the middle of a campaign. They're going to try to attack us on court. I, I could have said, you know, I can't come. And I did at the initial least. I can't come, Chairman. You know, I got to deal with what they're trying to do. I'm not letting them get this seat back. I'm going to whip him again like I've been whipping them. And I want to whip him good this time. So, <laughs> Chairman, I can't make it. But then I thought about it. I said, man, we're going to win this. And not because I'm all that, but because we're going to outwork them. Wow. You know, you never beat the machine because wow. you're intelligent wow. or you have a progressive agenda. Wow. You have to outwork the machine. Wow. And because we're going to do that, we are going to win again. So that's the other reason why I'm here. But I wanted to talk a little bit about what's happening in New York. The chairman mentioned something often, the, the power of power. Power is the great equalizer. Power, that's why I got in this electoral arena. State power, you can't deny it. You can't ignore it. And where is the state power? In the electoral arena. And it's not like it's their state, it's your money. It's your taxpaying dollars. So all of the resources that do or do not come into our community is based upon your dollars. So I decided to get involved in that. And in New York City, our success has been phenomenal. At some point, we're gonna stop and make a real good video about it. Here's the thing what I love about the electoral arena. The power that you have or the influence that you have is incredible. The New York City Council has four major powers. One, the council passes the budget, not the mayor. He proposes it. Two, the council passes all the laws. And most importantly, the council determines what's going to be built on city-owned land. Can you imagine that? I don't wear shirts and ties. I don't salute the flag. My office doesn't have the American flag. It has a red, black, and green flag. I have a big picture of Malcolm X and Che Guevara and all of that in my office. These white developers who need my support come into my office and say, I like your suit. And I like your suit. <laughs> That's a wonderful picture of Malcolm. <laughs> because they have to get my vote. They pull out all of their pictures of the wonderful affordable housing that they're going to bring in my neighborhood. My beloved East New York is not gentrified. Yeah. Harlem is gentrified. Yeah. Big Stuy is gentrified. Crown yeah. Heights is gentrified. My beloved East New York isn't. Yeah. Well, you know, people don't like to give you credit. So they said, but Charles, I saw four or five white people in East New York. And I said, yes, they were passing through. <laughs> they were visiting. They were visiting. But when I first came in office, East New York was 65% black and 25% black and Latino, Latino and Latina. 
Now, 20 years later, East New York is 92% Black and Latino. We lost some white population, Jim. We used to have 6.2% whites. Now we only have 3.5% whites. They done left. They done left. Chairman, I, I ain't had nothing to do with it. They left on their own. <laughs> That's real, y'all. They really left. They really left. We're one of the blackest districts in New York City. But this is what they do. The chairman mentioned neo-colonialism. New York State is probably the most neo-colonized state in the United States of America. The head of the state assembly, black man. The head of the state Senate, black woman. The attorney general of the state, black woman. The mayor of New York City, I hate to say black man, but black man. <laughs> the speaker of the city council, black woman. The chancellor of the schools, black man. The commissioner of the police, Black man, the borough presidents, we have five boroughs, two, three borough presidents, black. District attorneys, black. All of this blackness, first black vice president, first black president, yeah. and blacks are number one in poverty. Yeah. Number one in unemployment. Yeah. Number one in homelessness. Our community is number one in crime. You measure the success of a community by the elevation of the masses, not by the ascension of individuals in positions that your oppressors put them in. Even Martin Luther King called them manufactured leaders by the white power structure. So what we did is we brought into the electoral arena an ideology of African internationalism. Any movement that doesn't have ideology or vision well, is like flying a plane without radar. Well, you won't know where you're going or where you're landing. <laughs> so we brought that into the movement. So the good thing about being in this, and we won these seats, is the resources I get. No matter what they feel about me, we passed some rules in the city council so every city council member gets $5 million for capital money. Whether they like me or not, too bad. Everybody gets it. Every city council member gets $500,000 to give out to programs. And every city council member gets four to 500,000 to hire staff. So who did I hire? Viola Plummer from the December 12th movement. Omawali Omar, Clay is my chief of staff. Vincent. December 12th movement, yeah. Quran and Joy, all of them radicals. Yeah. So now they have a decent salary with health care, with benefits, and still be radical and revolutionary. Yeah. And what I have set the example for them, don't play that game, you know, like I'm going to be cool until I get in, and then after I get in, then I'm going to say this and do that. If you're punk out before you get in, yeah. you're going to be a punk after you get in. So I went in, they said, Charles, when you go in, when you run, make sure, don't tell them you were in the Black Panthers, you know, put on a shirt and tie, let's just front it. No. Yeah. I said, I'm not doing that. And after you get in, since I didn't do it and I won, and I said, see, I told you, they said, well, you better do it now because we got to get stuff. We got to get stuff. When does it stop? Right. You got to get stuff. So I said, all right, I got in, I'm not doing it. I said, don't attack the governor, attack them. Yeah making his state of the state address, got up and said, you're a hypocrite. You know? And it was with all his people, like 2,000 people that he invited. I said, Lord, you got to help me. I know the chairman, I'm trying to get the chairman to heaven. So I do believe in the black revolutionary Messiah, Jesus Christ, a black revolutionary. So I'm trying to get my materialist. Uh, <laughs> Lord, I'm working on the chairman, help me now. I gotta get my man in with me. <laughs> so, you know, I said, man, you know, 
I interrupted him, and it was the best thing I did. See, part of it was tactically. Yeah. How much time I got? I want to make sure I get to my real point. I'm good. Yeah, two more minutes. Oh, okay. Um, so anyway, I knew if I hit the top dog in the state, the governor publicly, and didn't get punished for it, then all of the commissioners and mayors and all of them would say, I ain't messing with that brother. Because he dealt with the governor and didn't get punished. Matter of fact, the governor called me up. Hey, hey, hey Assemblyman, I, I, I'm not your enemy. I want to bring a park into your district, the Shirley Chisholm Park, State Park. And I want you to stand with me and uh, I'll give you all the credit. I said, Governor, we need that park and do it. But I would never stand with you. And you can never give me credit. I would lose credibility standing with you. <laughs> Do the park, but I'm not gonna be there. There's enough Negroes, I didn't say this to him, but there's enough Negroes in there that will stand with you, but it won't be this brother. Yeah. You know what? He brought the park in, put $20 million into it. All the blacks were skinning and grinning with him. I was not there. And I said, I will not do that. Yeah. This is what they do. So this electoral school is critical because of this period of neo-colonialism. Yeah. So that if we get black revolutionaries, African revolutionaries elected, it's critical because of what's happening in New York. You know, you have the brothers in, in Tennessee. Yes, they uh, showed you that even after you exercise that, they're going to tell, they might as well say, hey, look, why don't you just go, out, go up in the hills and get your guerrilla stuff going because we ain't going to give you even when you vote, even when you get elected, we're not going to honor you. I don't know whether these brothers are revolutionaries or not. They may not be, but the mere fact that even that, yeah. some babies dying and you don't want them to talk about gun control, you know, something simple like that. So what they're saying to us is that even when you do that, we might cut that off. So we better be prepared. You know, Fidel Castro ran for Congress. And after he ran for Congress, uh, Batista rose up and said, you know, that election's canceled. Yeah. So Ashwell said, fine, let me go up in the hills and handle my business. <laughs> Hamas used to be against elections. When the elections was happening, stuff was getting blown up. But then they said, you know, let's, let's, let's get down. Let's get into the arena. They won. Yeah. I've been to the Gaza Strip. You know, they won and won all of that. So there's something about using the electoral arena as a tactic, not a panacea. And then you got to watch out why this school is so important because you can't put just anybody in, even if you think they're revolutionaries when they come in. May he rest in peace. My brother from the Black Panther Party, you know, I'll just leave him alone since he's not with us anymore, but got into Congress and flipped. You know, even John Lewis wasn't that much of a civil rights person even after he got power and into Congress. So we got to get people to have that power to stay in. There's nothing more powerful in this day and age, nothing more powerful than planting the seed of revolution in the fertile mind of the masses. Yes. Because they're not just attacking the chairman, they're not just attacking individuals, they're attacking the idea. Yes. Ideas are powerful. My man, Steve Vigo said the most potent weapon in the hands of the oppressor is the mind of the oppressed. So we got to make sure that our people get it, that our people get that plan to see. One last thing, to show you how important that is, as an elected official, even when I'm focusing on things like we had, we just had a forum on Medicaid. We wanted to make sure that our seniors and everybody knew the process so they didn't lose their Medicaid. And so we had the Medicaid forum, we had the proper agencies there, they signed everybody up, but we didn't just talk about Medicaid, I let my staff do that. I got up there and I talked about the fact that they, Hakeem Jeffries, I consider a neo-colonial black puppet of Nancy Pelosi. But Barbara Lee, who was on the West Coast, was in there for 20, 30 years. She should have had his position, but she didn't get it because Pelosi can't control her. 
but he can control, she can control Hakeem Jeffries. So even they, they passed a resolution condemning socialism. Yeah. Yeah. Hakeem and all of them passed it with the Republicans. Yeah. At the bottom of that resolution, it said, and any programs that have any characteristics of socialism should be condemned as well. And that was Medicare and Social Security. So now they get into the arena and they're now attacking Medicare and Social Security and talking about they don't have enough money. New York State's budget is $227 billion. New York City's budget is $102.7 billion. We had an, an excess, a surplus of $4.9 billion that we didn't expect to get from Wall Street. The mayor, Mayor Cop Adams, and Adrian Adams, I call it the Adams family budget, they are cutting 4% from every city agency with a surplus and just gave the PBA, they call it the Patrolman Benevolence Association, I call it the Patrolman Brutality Association, gave them a 4% raise and $11 billion budget, cut $400 million from education. Brothers and sisters, we got to rise up. This school is critical. It's the most important venture of our time. We're going to make it happen. We're going to win with revolutionaries in the electoral arena all over this country. It's going to start here. It's going to continue in New York because we will win. Uhuru. Uhuru.